King Collector here and today we are working on the boat once again. Today is a bit of a special day for this thing as uh, I bought something very expensive for it. $1,000 to be exact. I hadn't planned on making this purchase uh, this early but I did so well let me show you what it is. Yeah I got the 670 it's here. I drove one hour back and forth to get this thing because my Harbor Freight did not have it in stock so I had to go to the next one which was about 30-40 miles away so well regardless it's right here in front of our faces now so oh would you look at that it's used for boats too anyways let's get this thing open we'll get it running and uh, we'll take it from there all right, let's open this thing up. Very fun trying to get it out of my Jeep there because with my uh, subwoofer box in there, this thing sits about a quarter inch from the ceiling on the vehicle. So it was very fun trying to get it out of there by myself. This thing weighs 120 pounds in the box. So yeah, I'm sure you can imagine it was quite the nightmare. All right, we got these stupid plastic straps off. I hate these things with every fiber of my being. Let's get the tape off. Whew, it's getting hot. Okay, we got some important warranty stuff. We are not modifying this engine right now because, yes, it is still on the warranty, 90 days. I was going to get a one-year one, but by the time one year rolls around, this thing will probably be making 50 horsepower. So, yeah, I uh, I just got the 90-day one. So, every 20 hours of use change. Yeah, we're not even going to put 20 hours on this thing, I don't think, because we're not going to have a lot of time to ride the boat around, to be honest. So, so. our eyes on the beautiful sight. Smells like a new engine to me. There it is in the box. Looks pretty good. Got all the stupid warranty stickers on it. Okay, so we have these hangers here. I have a uh, pulley hoist that I can use to lift this thing out of the box because I think I'm going to need to do that. Because, uh, yeah, we need the box intact in case this thing does not uh, fit our expectations. So, right, let's uh, clear the way for the hoist and we'll get this thing out of here. All right, got my hoist set up, which it is rated for like 200 pounds, so it's fine. Let's get this thing out of here. Slowly. There we are. All right, so I kind of took an in-depth look at this thing, looking for any kind of defects and whatnot. I know some people have issues with it, but it's a very rare thing, but I still want to just make sure this thing's actually good to go, and I don't see anything. I turned it over a couple times by hand, and there is uh, no binding whatsoever, so I think we're, uh, I think we're good. So uh, we have to add the oil. 
I drained out the casting oil out of it. It's very important you do that because sometimes that stuff can be kind of gritty and it does bad things. But anyways, I got some Quaker State SW or yeah, 10W30, which uh, is what I use in basically everything I have. I've never had an issue with it. My 400,000 mile Malibu has always had Quaker State all mileage oil in it. So, well, let that speak for itself. Then I got this uh, STP oil additive. This is just a, uh, mainly it uh, has some extra ZDDP zinc in it. So that's really good for flat tapping engines like this one. So that's why I got it. Anyways, let's uh, put the oil in this thing. All right, so I got a fuel line up to my test tank here. And uh, I have the starter jumped to the battery well, it's not jumped, it's actually connected how it should be through the key. It's uh, on my lawnmower here. So basically, I just uh, ran it on the starter for a couple minutes. Well, not even a couple minutes, like 30 seconds. I waited to hear the starter kind of slow down because that means the oil pump has built up pressure. So I cranked it on pressure for a little bit to get everything oiled up before we actually start it. So now I just need to put gas in it. And this thing should fire right up. So we got the uh, first part of the break-in done, where we just kind of, you know, opened revs and stuff like that. The uh, second part will actually, you know, be driving this thing around in the water where there's actual, there's an actual load on the engine. So um, for the most part, though, you know, it's not going to hurt it to, you know, rev it up and down every now and then a couple times just to keep the oil circulated and stuff. Plus, apparently, according to the... Uh, uh, warranty you basically have to do that every three months so I might start this thing up in the winter just run it for a couple minutes and call it good but other than that it's uh it's running really good so uh, there are a couple things that uh, will need to be done to it uh, first things first we are not keeping that uh, big old can of a muffler back there for very long anyway. If we do have it in the boat, it's not going to stay in there for very long. But anyways, this has a one-way exit for two pipes. This pipe has to travel a short amount of uh, distance to get out. And this one has to travel a longer amount of distance to get out. Basically, the easiest way to explain this is there are two different jet sizes in this two-barrel carburetor. This one is... I don't remember the sizes. I know this one is, I think, a bit bigger, actually, than this one. It's I, one way or the other, I can't remember. But when you remove this muffler and you have equal length, that can actually cause issues. Like, this can, like, you know, start running unevenly and popping and backfiring and stuff. So, we'll need to get equal size jets for this thing, which I think we'll have to go with the bigger one. And replace the smaller one in it so I don't know we'll figure it out there's plenty of videos on that crap so anyways we'll uh, let it cool down and then we'll actually put it in the back of the boat here just to see what it's going to look like so the goal space is between these two ribs so that's where we'll put it and we're ready to put it in there all right I have the engine sitting in the boat now as you can see it was very fun trying to get it in there but I got it nonetheless. It's sitting on a temporary engine mount in there. Of course, I'm not gonna actually use a piece of wood to mount this thing. It's gonna be too powerful for it, but the height and width are the exact same as the square tubing that I'll be using, so it works for now. 
Got the exhaust off of it just because it was in the way. I needed better access to the PTO shaft when I put the uh, U-joint on it and stuff like that. And then the ignition box is also off of it now since obviously the ignition is not going to be back there. It'll be up in the dashboard of course. And then I got the throttle assembly over here. Trying to figure out how to uh, make this thing work. Not really sure how I'm going to do it though. I want to extend this lever, put like a piece of like threaded rod in, or something inside this thing right here. I have no idea how that's going to work though. I don't think it would work very good to be honest. So we'll have to figure something out. But for now, we're going to call this video good. It's a half episode. We're not really actually doing much work in it. I just wanted to have a video for this week and... Well, this was it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this quick little episode, and I'll see you next week.